Hi, my name is Andy Fulton. I came up with a repair kit to refurbish my Audi Allroad's weak air suspension compressor and now I sell these kits online as Bagpipe and Andy's compressor repair kit. This is a video to help show you how to fit my compressor repair kit to your Wabco air suspension compressor to renew its compression. Typical symptoms of a weak compressor are it can be noisy when it's running and always very slow to lift through the levels and even failing to reach a requested level. This Wabco unit has been removed from a Mark III Range Rover. It's the same compressor found on BMW models also. The compressor is found in the boot underneath the spare wheel. To remove it from the car, remove the 10mm nuts here, four of them, undo the air hose and unplug the electrical connection and lift it out of the car. So tools required, I've got a T30 Torx bit, I've got some cable snips, I've got 10mm tools, a screwdriver and I've got a rag or a cloth. What you get in the kit, you get a precision machined piston ring manufactured by myself. You get two new o-rings, one round and one shaped. These are to suit different years of the compressors. You get two new bolts. Now they're not actually required for this model but this is a generic kit to fit many different vehicles. You get cable ties and also an instruction booklet with some photographs to help you with the repair. So turn the compressor upside down. We're going to remove this panel, just lever it gently. And this exposes the compressor mounted in the shell. We're going to undo this cable clip and remove these three 10mm nuts and bolts to remove the compressor out of the shell. And now we do the electrical clip. Just lever gently behind it till it unclips. To remove the nut, it's easier to hang the unit over the workbench so you can get a spanner on the bolt head and your socket on the nut. The washer and then lower the bolt with its rubber and the same for the next one. So with the three bolts removed and the clip undone we can lift the compressor out of its shell. Just set that over there and uh, the next step is going to be removing the compressor from this metal frame here because the objective is to try and get to these two bolt positions where the piston lies underneath. So first we're going to cut a couple of the cable ties just to give us access. So we're going to remove this air intake pipe just by squeezing the collar while pulling the pipe out. And the same at this side, squeeze the collar while pulling the pipe out. So we're going to remove this air intake hose Next, we want to loosen just a few turns this screw which is holding in the temperature sensor here. So this is the Torx T30, just a few turns and that allows the temperature sensor to come free. So next we're going to loosen these three 10mm nuts. and remove them completely. And next we're going to remove this 10mm nut. And next we're going to undo the air output pipe. It's the same as before, press down in the collar while pulling the pipe out. So lift the compressor out the frame, remove the temperature sensor from the end and just be careful we still have a connection here to remove. There's a small metal peg to unclip and then just pulls off. With that unplugged we can set it to the side. We're going to remove this 10mm nut and this Torx bolt here to lift the cylinder off the motor.
So we've actually removed this stud just for ease of use. Um, this is the piston ring that we're going to be changing in a minute. But also have a look at the air intake vein, which is on top of the piston. Make sure it looks closed, because yeah, that will help the performance of the compressor. So the cylinder walls are actually tapered by design. This is not wear. Uh, they're tapered halfway up the cylinder and then they go parallel. Check for damage in the cylinder. It should be grey and smooth to touch. If scored or damaged, the new ring will not perform well or last very long. Also see the wear to the top edge of the piston ring. It's actually tapered. So comparing the thickness of the new ring to the old ring will not show much difference. It's this tapered wear here which reduces the contact in the cylinder. And this wear is due to the piston ring tilting as it travels up and down as there's no gudgeon pin so it cannot travel square to the bore. Also the tapered cylinder causes wear to this top edge. So note the orientation of the old piston ring so you fit the new one in the same way because there's a wrong way to fit it. Note the way it's fitted around the small timing pin so it can move but only a little. You may find it easier to position the new piston ring in the same orientation before removing the old one. So simply stretch the piston ring apart, lifting it over the piston. So inspect or clean the piston groove if it's needed. Then simply stretch the new ring over the piston into place, making sure when it's squeezed closed, it fits around the small timing pin and not sitting on top of it. If you cannot see the pin, it is upside down or fitted too far around. Next, we're going to remove the old O-ring from the cylinder. Take your dry rag or cloth and give the cylinder a good clean, making sure there's no debris in the cylinder bore. Then fit the new O-ring, whatever one is required. Don't use any lubrication in the system, it's designed to be dry running. And offer the two. Together. So we're just going to put the compressor back into its frame in the reverse steps. Lastly, making sure we push the temperature sensor back into position and just gently pinch it in place. Don't over tighten that bolt. Put the air output hose back on, just a push fit, but push it right up to the white line marker. And next, fitting the air intake hose, put it right underneath the cables and then just Press fit, push them right up to the white lines. So next we're going to fit the cable ties we cut off earlier.
So next, just double check that you've connected everything back up. The air output hose, air intake hose, the nuts here, electrical switch for the solenoid valve, and then the screws and bolts here. So next, we put the compressor assembly back into its shell. Just note the washers and the rubbers are still in their same orientation and fit the bolts and washers in the same order you removed them. Next, we'll just put the cable clip back onto its place. And then put the lid back on. So that's the compressor repair kit fitted. A good refurbished compressor will produce 16 bar, which is 220 PSI. Uh, fit it back onto the vehicle in the reverse steps. If you need further guides, help or photos to assist you to remove the compressor and fit this kit, Go to the installation page at my website, which is www.bagpipeandandy.com and the web address is also shown on screen. Any questions, please contact me. My details are also on the web page.